Hi friends, uh, as you are aware, VAT will be implemented in Oman from April 2021. Before we going to talk about VAT, we should uh, aware about nature of the uh, value-added tax. It's a kind of indirect tax. It means uh, there is no any direct relationship with tax collector and the uh, final final taxpayer. Uh, government uh, will act as always uh, tax collector. Then final uh, in the uh, value-added tax, consumer always be a uh, be the uh, taxpayer. Then there is an intermediary party called businesses. These businesses will collect VAT from consumers. Then that will pay to the government. That that's why we call these value-added tax as a indirect tax. Uh, the, the final tax liability will have to bear by the consumers. Basically, these uh, indirect taxes uh, charge on uh, products and services. Uh, if we talk about direct taxes, those those direct taxes basically charge on people uh, wealth, income, and uh, property. Then they, they, these people have to bear that tax by themselves because they can't uh, transfer this liability to uh, third party. Tax always will be applied on the value addition of uh, production of a good or supply of service. Uh, value addition means if we think about the uh, production of a vehicle. We can recognize two points. Uh, number first point, uh, 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 some raw materials. Then ending point, uh, the complete car. In between this uh, starting and ending point, there are so many conversions. Basically, that will be apply on the value of this conversion. If you think about the, if you think about the value of this conversion, say uh, two thousand, then the the VAT rate. Will be apply on this value. If, uh, if we uh, talk about in detail, we can recognize certain raw materials uh, at the starting point, such such as uh, iron, uh, paints, and uh, certain tires, uh, mean rubbers and uh, uh, glasses. Based on those materials, they are change. They are preparing vehicle body and engine uh, and uh, mirrors. Those things. Uh, those are the conversion. It means the value addition in between starting point and ending point. The VAT will be charged on the amount of that value addition. Here I have taken the process of uh, bread making for your easy understanding to explain about the value addition. Here certain parties involved with this uh, pr uh, process during the bread making. Uh, farmer and uh, flour mill and uh, baker and the uh, shop finally consumer I have taken equal uh, value addition amount for your easy understanding and uh, I have assumed the VAT percentage as 5% let's assume this farmer doesn't have any inputs it means he's uh, producing this wheat by his own seeds and uh, cultivating in his own uh, land then we can uh, assume this uh, the value of this wheat uh, it means his value addition 100 then he will charge 5% on this 100 and uh, final price will be 105 he will sell this uh, wheat with the uh, inclusive of this wet amount it means 105 the flour mill will buy this wheat at the price of 105 then uh, they also have certain value addition it means they are changing this uh, this wheat to the uh, wheat, wheat, wheat flour then they also will charge 5% uh, uh, on this value addition it means 5 then uh, final uh, price will be 210 it means inclusive of uh, this 5 5 and this 5 means here 100 here 100 uh, with these two wet amounts it, it will be 210 he is selling this uh, flour mill to the baker at the price of 210 he is he also have certain value addition he will charge 5 percent on this then that will be 5 then final price will be 315 he will sell this bread at the pri price of 315 then shop also have a uh, certain value addition uh, amount of 100 then they will charge 5% on that then finally they will uh, sell this at the price of 
420 then consumer will buy this bread at the price of 420 here is the important point this 420 is include total VAT amount it means here 5 15 uh, 15 and 20 plus this value addition amount 100 100 300 400 it means as a consumer final uh, tax uh, tax expenses final tax uh, amount will bear by the consumer this uh, this VAT uh, amounts will not be a expense expense for these uh, these parties because they are charging that uh, on the on their price and selling selling it to the uh, next party here i am not going to talk about input vet and output vet because it it will little complicate for uh, it will it is little complicate here i just want to explain you about the uh, this payment this indirect payment by consumer total amount of vet uh, with the uh, actual amount of the uh, actual value of the production here actual value of the production is 400 100 100 300 and 400 plus vet total will be 420 here consumer will not pay anything uh, directly to the government these other parties uh, indirectly collecting this from the, the the consumer and pay that to the government this uh, farmer will pay, pay five to the government this uh, flow mill will pay five and baker will pay five and shop will pay five total will be 20 they are indirectly collecting this uh, 20 from from the consumer as we talk about uh, in the previous uh, slide uh, businesses always uh, working as an intermediary party in, in between consumer and government they will collect uh, wet amount from the uh, consumer and will pay to the government uh, therefore the wet always will not be an expense for a wet registered business it means final VAT expense uh, will be bear by consumer. The important part of the uh, VAT uh, is uh, we should uh, recognize which which uh, good and services will be charged VAT and uh, which uh, good and services will not apply this VAT amount. On that we can recognize two types of good and services which are categorized under VAT law number one is standard rate uh, good and services number two zero rate and number three is exempt rate good and services which are coming under standard rate category the the standard wet amount it means standard wet rate wet rate will be applied on these good and services here zero rate and exempt rate as a consumer we don't want to pay any wet good and services which are coming under these two categories the, the zero rate uh, uh, will be important for the businessman because uh, they they can claim uh, the uh, VAT amount uh, what they have paid as an input it means uh, if they paid any VAT on purchases they can claim that from the government but they can't uh, charge any VAT amount from the consumers uh, the, and the uh, businessman who's engaging with this exempt uh, scheme uh, product and services they also can't charge VAT from the uh, consumers as a consumer uh, under standard rate we have to pay VAT and uh, we don't want to pay good and services which are coming under zero rate and exempt rate uh, here is the important part uh, I have explained you three types of VAT uh, uh, categories because it, it will be easy for you to understand these two slides mm. here it the, is the VAT exempt it means there, there will not there is no any VAT liability it means businessmen can't uh, charge VAT uh, which are coming under exempt category here I have taken uh, important important part uh, parts uh, you should aware uh, which are coming under exempt category. Number one is financial services and related goods. 
and uh, it, it means uh, bank loans uh, leasings those those things will not apply where the second one is healthcare services and related good it means uh, uh, doctor consultation and uh, bill on pharmaceutical items those items and services will not apply where number three is educational services and related good it means uh, uh, any kind of service provided providing by uh, educational firm that services and goods will not apply wet and uh, sale of bare lands this uh, is not important as a consumer here i have taken only the uh, important part uh, parts which which we should aware as a consumer next one is resale of residential properties and the uh, next one is uh, domestic passenger transport it means uh, that will not apply on the uh, domestic uh, passenger transport services it means bus fare will not apply that uh, the important one is uh, uh, rent of residential properties uh, it means uh, that will not apply on the house rents Here is the next uh, category. Uh, we have already uh, talked about three categories. Here, zero rated uh, category uh, under this category under the category uh, good and services which are coming under zero rate. Uh, we don't want to pay any VAT. Uh, here I have taken important important good and services. Number one is uh, is uh, food items. There is no particular list. Uh, these foods, food items will uh, apply that. These these items will not apply that. Uh, in generally, basically, uh, FMCGs may not apply that. This uh, list will be decided by the particular authority. Basically, uh, we can assume uh, FMCGs will not apply that. And the second one is. Uh, uh, medicines and uh, vet will not apply on the medicines uh, as a consumer we don't want to pay vet on the purchase of medicines and the next one is uh, transport services be uh, between GCC countries that service also will not apply vet as a consumer we should aware about this exempt exempt uh, uh, good and services which are coming under exempt scheme and zero uh, zero rate scheme because we don't want to pay any vet uh, good and services which are coming under exempt scheme and zero rate scheme uh, all other uh, good and services which are not coming under uh, exempt scheme and zero scheme will apply standard rate it means those good and services, uh, especially uh, uh, motor vehicles and uh, jewelries and uh, electronic items, the, those kind of good and services are not coming under exempt uh, scheme and uh, zero zero rate scheme. It means they are those kind of items will charge by uh, standard rate. It means we have to pay five percent on uh, those kind of uh, good and services. Most of the people in the market uh, scare about that. I need to tell you that is not a ghost. Uh, let me explain you my 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 experience when I joined with the company in uh, three years back. I did not have any practical experience about that, even though I have uh, I had uh, theoretical knowledge. But I I was easily adapt with the VAT process. That time I had to file returns in manual later on uh, after few months i had to file in uh, by online method so i want to tell you this is not very difficult thing it's very easy don't think this as a ghost uh, if you have theoretical knowledge better theoretical knowledge uh, you can uh, follow this uh, process very easily and you can file uh, vet returns very easily and uh, Definitely, uh, tax department will help you th because this is near, very very new for the country also. M might be that very new for them also. Our first question is whether I whether I need to register for VAT or not. Your supplies coming under zero rate or standard rate. 
you are completing first requirement for the VAT registration. I have talked about uh, zero rated and standard rated good and services uh, in my first video. If you don't have a clear idea about your uh, good and services, whether it's coming under zero rated or standard rate, you can clarify with tax department, then they will, they will help you. Uh, your good and services are coming under which category. If your good and services are coming under zero rated or standard rate scheme, you are completing first condition for the VAT registration. Second condition is VAT threshold, it means your turnover. If you are completing your turnover uh, within 12 consecutive months, uh, uh, if it is exceeding uh, Oman Real 38,500, you are completing second requirement also. Uh, this may be a, a consecutive months or proceeding months. It means if you are assuming uh, uh, next 12 months I'll be complete uh, 38,500 turnover, then you are completing second requirement. If you are completing both of these two requirements, you must register. Uh, other than that, if, if your good and services are coming under zero rate or standard rate and if you want to register for VAT as a voluntary reg registration, uh, you and your turnover exceeding 19,250, you are volunteer. You can voluntarily register for VAT from very first day. Uh, from very first day of your VAT registration, you have to issue VAT invoices. In the in the VAT invoices, you have to mention your name and address in clearly and your VAT registration number and customer name and uh, if you if. His uh, if you have his VAT registration number, that number also, and uh, details of taxable supplies, it means details of sales, uh, good and services, and uh, amount without VAT and VAT amount separately, and amount with VAT separately. These uh, these uh, three amounts you have to mention separately. First amount, the amount of tax taxable supply without VAT, it means excluding VAT, then VAT amount separately, and amount with VAT. These are the major things you have to include in your VAT, VAT, VAT invoice. Uh, uh, the tax authority may publish standard standard invoice format or else you can follow uh, um, uh, you can follow uh, if, if they not publish any standard form uh, you can follow uh, format which is include and clearly mention these requirements these seven requirements uh, in that format. Next, next uh, requirement is VAT filing. Then we have registered for VAT. Then we have to issue the VAT invoices. After that, we have to uh, file VAT. It means compliances. We can uh, recognize four type of compliances. Number one is VAT payments. Uh, number two is returns, returns filing, and number three assessments, and number four documents or record maintained. VAT payments, uh, most of the countries, uh, they are uh, collecting VAT monthly. Uh, in Oman, they, I think they have not, not yet published that, how, how we have to pay VAT monthly or quarterly. Most of the countries collecting VAT payment in monthly. Uh, and VAT returns uh, means uh, most of the countries, uh, we have to file VAT in quarterly. It means uh, uh, three months, uh, three months uh, uh, VAT details. Then we have to include three month de details, VAT details, and it, it, it means input VAT and output VAT, plus our payment details and balance with the balance tax payment. Then uh, tax department will assess your, it means will inquire about your VAT after few period. Uh, that, that's we call assessment, same as income tax assessment. Then we, we are liable for the record maintaining. Uh, for certain period uh, that is clearly mentioned in the VAT law. Uh, in the VAT return we can recognize uh, these details. Number one is VAT input, input VAT. It means VAT payments on our purchases. Then number two is output VAT. It means VAT collected on from our sales. Then credit note. It means returns of sales. And then debit note details. It means returns of purchases. And uh, if they ask uh, separate details for government supplies, we have to mention that also. These are the ma major uh, 
ஃபைவ் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் மேஜர் டீ ஃபைவ் இன் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் கேட்டகரிஸ் வித் பட் வி ஹாவ் டு இன்க்ளூட் இன் தி வெட் ரிட்டர்ன் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த கண்ட்ரிஸ் வென் தே இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட் வெட் தேவ தேவ கோயிங் வித் மேனுவல் ஃபைலிங் லேட்டர் ஆன் தே ஹாவ் கன்வெர்ட் தட் டு ஆன்லைன் ஃபைலிங் இஃப் இஃப் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபைல் வெட் ஒன் பை மேனுவல் they will issue a standard format uh, which what we have to follow for uh, return filing same as uh, uh, final return filing it means income tax filing format what we are currently use here i have mentioned here i have given a detail uh, detail sheet about uh, input vat it means what vat we have paid on purchases uh, we can maintain uh, this kind of excel sheets Uh, the, here for input vat i have mentioned serial number and uh, invoice date uh, invoice date purchase invoice date and invoice number and supplier uh, supplier tin uh, tin number it means basically vat number and uh, name of the supplier and uh, description of goods uh, value of purchases without vat and vat amount uh, we can maintain this this kind of fo- format for for the record of input vat then we can easily uh, reconcile the these details and we can easily uh, compute uh, our input vat easily for the final return then you have to we, you have to collect all of these original invoices and you have to uh, you have to d- confirm whether these people are, are register for vat or not because uh, some people may 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 issue vat uh, invoices without registering for vat if uh, the, the tax authority ha- if they found that they will uh, uh, disregard this input vat then you have to bear this cost therefore uh, you have to confirm whether this uh, suppliers actually registered register for vat or not then uh, 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 it means liability for these suppliers whether uh, those are coming under zero rate or standard rate because if it if it is uh, coming under exam rate it means the you you have you should not pay any vat for this kind of uh, purchases then uh, tax authority will be disallow this kind of vat payment these are the things what you have to con- consider what you have to uh, think about your input vat here yeah, i have mentioned in the format uh, what you have to maintain uh, for output vat it means vat collection here i have uh, here you can see serial number then invoice date invoice number this is the uh, sequ- our invoice number it will be go in sequence order then purchases tin uh, pur- uh, purchases tin number it uh, and uh, purchases name and uh, this details of uh, supplies uh, and uh, uh, supply value without vat in then vat amount this is the format what you can you can maintain for the uh, output vat here you can easily uh, you can put 5% uh, uh, double checking uh, column here and easily uh, can put 5% to cross check whether this amount correct or not then here easily you can uh, you can easily cross check your collected uh, vat amount with this sales amount Yeah I have mentioned a format for credit notice it means sales returns uh you can use this format for credit notes here uh, i have mentioned serial number then uh, tin number then uh, purchases tin number then invoice date and invoice number then credit note number because this is, this is uh, this may uh, the uh, tax authority may ask Uh, this credit note uh, for which invoice then uh, you, if you maintain this kind of uh, format you can easily pro- produce these uh, those uh, information then uh, these are the invoice details these are the credit note details then credit note details these are the credit note number then value of credit note then vat amount this is the uh, format what you can use for credit notes here is the format what you can follow for the what you can include uh, for your debit note details it mean return of your purchases here is the serial number tin number it means supplier's tin number uh, here invoice date invoice number then debit note details here debit note number date and debit note number here is the 
value of uh, debit note than the wet amount this format uh, you can use for debit notes and uh, here i have put summary of your wet uh, wet wet uh, return it means wet computation you can see your output wet here i have put the uh, wet exclusive amount and wet amount output wet you may have all of these three categories supplies which are coming under all of these three categories standard trade supply zero supply and xm supply uh, you can put all of these things because your uh, annual turnover should should equal with this uh, wet returns amount then you can cross check that also if you can maintain this kind of format because uh, there will be uh, if wet returns if we have to file in quarterly uh, you will have a uh, for this kind of uh, uh, for, uh, for reports then uh, value of total of those four uh, uh, returns uh, should match with your annual turnover here i have put uh, wet amount these are the input wet uh, then uh, output wet sorry wet you have collect from uh, your purchase uh, your customers then here input wet uh, you have to uh, reduce this from your uh, uh, output wet uh, then here wet uh, credit notes and wet debit notes here i have put the summary uh, out your output wet uh, total you have collected 7500 as per this one and as per the previous uh, summary and your input wet you can deduct from this from your collections i have deducted uh, 5500 then wet on uh, credit it means uh, credit notes you can deduct that also then debit notes you have to add that finally you have to pay this is this amount uh, as your wet payment it means basically a uh, difference between your 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 collected wet and your wet payments this is the uh, amount what you have to pay uh, end of the computation this is the summary of uh, return filings uh, i think you might have a brief idea about this uh, returns filing and registration thank you uh, for watching my video